God is the great. Yes. What we doing wrong? Seeing. Good. What we doing bad? Yes. Seeing. So it is our religious duty to protect our neighbors. Be kind with them. Well, you know, there was that Englishman, he had an accident and he was taken to a hospital and uh, he was unconscious and when he came to himself and he found black faces everywhere, I mean black nurses and uh, black doctors and uh, he was surprised, he said, oh gosh, where am I? Which country is this? So I think it's just a joke, but uh, this again is a very revealing joke. It tells you how much dependent your hospital system is <laughs> on, uh, you know, Pakistanis and Indians. This mosque, uh, if my memory serves me right, was uh, founded in 1942, when there were very handful of uh, Muslims in this country, and mostly traders. And uh, during the Second World War, most same soldiers began to come here from France. They naturally wanted some place to pray. We celebrated this morning the festival of the sacrifice of Prophet, great Prof, Prophet Abraham, of his son Ishmael. May peace be on both of them. Because he had a dream that uh, God asked him that he should sacrifice whatever he loved most. And of course, naturally, he, he loved his son most, so he did not hesitate to sacrifice it at the command of God. And naturally his son was saved and uh, a ram was put in between by the miracle. And that's why this uh, tradition has been going on for over a thousand years. A Muslim is bound by the laws of the religion to pray five times a day. If a man comes to the mosque and by chance he has to go to the toilet before he uh, goes in to pray, he m can't pray in that suit. Their prayer is not uh, accepted if they are not uh, clean. So we can pray anywhere, providing we are clean and we take our shoes off and we've got our rug, which is only used for praying, you see. And, uh, of course, they, as you know, they perform their prayers and they go down to God's feet. They touch the floor. That, that uh, A lot of English people think when they're going to the floor that they are they're kissing the ground, but they are not. They are going down to God's feet. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. The Lord of the world, the God of the world. Mrs. Taslimali shares with her husband and son the social and religious duties of the mosque. Me and my husband are the Muslim undertakers and he's also classed as a minister because he visits the hospitals, mental homes, uh, prisons and uh, he does the remand homes and uh, visits the sick. And of course, as I say, he does the burials. We have a special way of washing and shrouding the dead bodies. I help him. I have to do the females and he does the males. Of course, we have to have somebody else with us. Gulam Tazlimali, who is only 17, is an imam. He deputizes for his father, who is away on pilgrimage to Mecca. This is uh, 
the Holy Quran and it's a first surah and it's a very difficult kind of um, it li uh, needs a lot of pronunciation to uh, read it and a lot of uh, concentration and I studied seven years of this in Cardiff actually with some Arab people and also I went over to uh, to Saudi Arabia and also learned some of the methods it's very hard to um, to catch it up it takes a lot of practice and uh, these children all here are learning it in stages um, like uh, this young chap, he's learning the um, and starting with the alphabet and so on, which uh, just like our A B C D. Say it to the gentleman. Let me hear you say. Alif ba t s j h k d z b s s i q s w x y z. A few hundred yards up Commercial Road from the mosque is Hessel Street. Here, among other Pakistani shops, is a Muslim butcher. He has facilities for his customers to choose live chickens which they can then ritually slaughter. Muslims share with Jews restrictions about meat eating. They may not eat pork and the meat they do consume must be ritually slaughtered. Mr. Ali used to kill chickens in his flat for his own use. But now the increase of Pakistanis in his neighborhood has made it possible for him to turn this into a business. Shah Jahan is a law student at Lincoln's Inn and secretary of the Pakistani Welfare Association. That majority of our members come from East Pakistan and uh, we have had long tradition of going to the seas and uh, we worked in marching navies and uh, that is one of the most important factor which has more or less introduced England to us. And the usual practice is that we come here for three or four years for the first time. We try to know England and settle down in this country and you, you will see amongst us that uh, if somebody is in need of help or he is buying some, uh, one house or he is starting a business of his own. We really help them and the community and the members of the community help them very much. In Pakistan Welfare Association we have near about more than 3,000 members. As you possibly know, many of our members can't speak English. So we felt the necessity of organizing us into some sort of organization where we can help our members in various aspects of their life, the problems they face here, uh, particularly the language problem and the dealings with uh, local authorities, Ministry of Pension and National Insurance, um, income tax authorities, you know, sometimes to their employers, trade unions, and all the rest of it. And uh, we also uh, try to find out accommodation for our members, and uh, supposing one of our members wants to buy some house or flat, we try to negotiate or try to help them in, in getting the mortgages and things like that. Bradford, a city of textile mills, has 12,000 Pakistani immigrants and nearly all of them work in the mills. One of them is Mr. Qureshi. That's why the people you see coming, because they can't get job in that country. And they get better job and better, you see, money in this country. That's why they are coming. Can and uh, I, I can, you see, I can sure to say this one, that whenever our country needs us, we can go back, you see. There is just some people, you see, those are not changed. But still, they are thinking that they are living in Pakistan. They never think that they are living in Bradford. They think that is, this, is their, this country is their own, you see. Everybody likes to live in that area where there is <laughs> people living, you see. Everybody like that. It is a natural thing, you see. It's quite, quite natural. Where your friends living, you want to live there. Rahman Khan is a West Pakistani who has been working in the mills. He is one of the immigrants now being trained as a teacher in Bradford. No, I don't think it's the question of they want to live alone. It's, it's, only, it's again, I, I, I would say the main problem is the language. Uh, uh, they would mix up with the English community as they would with their own. But the main problem is uh, lack of communication and uh, they tend to get together because they understand each other. And uh, for example, a Pakistani is living among the British people, uh, British families, where uh, he, he can't make friends because of lack of uh, language. Uh, I mean, he would, he would uh, naturally feel lonely 
and he tends to uh, go where some of his friends or countrymen are living. Pakistanis come to Bradford to do the jobs and live in the houses English people no longer want. Hanover Square was once fashionable, but it has been taken over by immigrants. Some houses in Bradford cost as little as 200 pounds. I think that we are getting better wages than your people, you see, because we are working more hours. You see, not only 41, some of our people working 72 hours, some of our people working all the week, you see. And uh, I have seen just one, one or two in, uh, you see, hundreds. Those are working continually seven days. Some of them working continually seven nights. And when they work too much, they will get too much. <laughs> it is up to the working hours. Pakistanis come to work where their relatives or friends are. But those Pakistanis who are already here feel an obligation to help only their relatives, fellow villagers or tribesmen. Most of the houses are occupied by men who live in a barrack-like atmosphere with card playing and pin-ups. These men are Pathans who come from the northwest frontier between Pakistan and Afghanistan. By living together, they are to some extent recreating their village life at home. Very few of them have brought their wives, so they cook and fend for themselves. Drinking is prohibited in our religion. But uh, when our people just came in this country, due to the weather of this country, they are not dead drunker, but they drink. Not too much, just two, three bottles in a week, or two, three pints in a week, due to this weather, you see. They are not habitual, they can't drink in their own country, never. Impossible to get that drink in there, you see. And uh, they are drinking only because they are working in the mills, in the factories, and that nylons work, and the wools work, you see. They, whenever they ask from someone that we are just not feeling well, somebody told them, go and drink. Two, three points, you will be all right. <laughs> That's why they are drinking. <laughs> The cinema is part of Pakistani social life, which is confined to men. In fact, there are only 600 women out of the 12,000 Pakistanis in Bradford. Most girls, on reaching puberty, and all women are secluded from men, except their relatives. This custom of keeping women apart is called purda. The wife of this cafe proprietor is an Ahmadiyya. Because she belongs to this sect, she never leaves her home without her face being covered by a veil, called a burqa. We, the Muslim women, observe parda. Its meaning is not to disclose our beauty, natural or artificial, for the men. We use an out covering for it. It is an order from God, and it is described in these words in the holy book, Quran. Although a graduate from Karachi University, she observes strict purda in this block of council flats. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful, and say to the believing women that they restrain their eyes and guard their private parts, and that they disclose not their natural and artificial beauty, except that which is apparent thereof and that they draw their head coverings over their bosom, and that they disclose not their beauty save to their husband. These are the restrictions from God, so that human being can lead a life of purity. When Pakistani families visit each other, the husband opens the front door to ensure that his wife may not encounter a stranger. Once inside, the men and women sit in separate rooms. Only children move from one room to another. 
और एक साल दो साल पढ़ेंगे फिर उसके बाद सोचेंगे क्या बन रहा है फिर यहाँ इंग्लैंड में मैरिजेस आर अरेज फॉर बैचलर्स लिविंग इन ब्रैडफर्ड बाई देर फैमिलीज एट होम The mother of this baby was married in Pakistan by telephone to a distant relative living in Bradford. <laughs> Mr. Sudell came to study English literature and is now training to be a teacher. Back in my country, society on the whole is patriarchal, father dominating. Moreover, we have joint family system. I mean everybody living together. and uh, women tending the home men going out to earn their living and everybody feeling closer together for some women a visit to the clinic may be the only time they leave their home regularly the husband looks after everything else the women continue to wear their traditional dress To wear Western clothes would be unacceptable to all of them on religious grounds. <laughs> Mrs. Ali is one of the few Pakistani women to speak English. You are staff nurse. I took my training in West Pakistan, and as you know, everybody likes to go in other countries. And I was hoping to come in London. I come here, and I am working as a staff nurse in London Hospital. And after that, I had a baby here. You know, according to our customs, we are not supposed to choose our husband by ourselves. Our parents they arrange, and each parents. They go towards each other and they ask that we want to marry with our girl to your boy. Are you happy or not? Then they choose. They say it's all right, and then they our marriages there, arranged marriages there. Mr. Ali has just returned with his wife from Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca. One aspect of greater freedom they enjoy in Britain. It is uh, necessary for uh, every Muslim. from the religious point of view to visit mecca at least once in his life provided he can afford that and uh, while we are uh, in great britain uh, we can uh, save uh, money to afford uh, to go over there and uh, there's no other uh, nothing uh, nothing else to uh, but you call it uh, to uh, which doesn't allow us to go there we can uh, go at any time and uh, while we are in pakistan uh, there are so many difficulties to reach mecca uh, because uh, the government over there doesn't allow any everybody to reach mecca most men work on night shifts at the mills which increases the isolation of their wives These women have no common language and do not speak English. I talked to Mrs. Siddiq in Urdu. आपने आपका शोहर को देखा था शादी से पहले? Your husband works at at night. How do you spend your time in the day when he is resting? ऐसे होता है जब वो आते हैं उनको नाश्ता करवा के. Mrs. Siddiq gives her husband his meal when he comes back early in the morning. And after he's gone to bed, she does the housework and reads the quran and um, does some sewing or knitting or she goes to visit her neighbors who are also pakistanis and this is how she spends her time mostly and uh, mrs siddiq had you seen your husband before you were married pehle pehle to nahi dekha idhar aake dekha idhar aake dekha she only saw him after coming to england to aapki shaadi kaise hui aise hui निकाह का कागज चला जाता ना हमारे यहाँ से द मैरिज वॉज अरेज बायिस्तान
पहले जब आई थी तो पढ़ती थी वेन शी फर्स्ट केम टू इंग्लैंड शी यूज टू रीड द कुरान रेगुलरली एंड रेड रेगुलरली बट हर हजबेंड वर्क नाइट शिफ्ट फॉर अ वीक एंड देन ही इज ऑन डे शिफ्ट फॉर अन अदर वीक सो दिस अपसेट्स हर रूटीन एंड शी डजेंट ऑलवेज प्रे एवरी टाइम शी सपर्स टू प्रे शी जस्ट मैनेज इज द फर्स्ट प्रेयर इन द मॉर्निंग Do you fast during the months of Ramadan? Pura mahine ka. Pura mahine ka aur namaz bhi padhte hain pure. Ha. Namaz Quran Sharif. In the month of Ramadan she fasts every day and tries to pray regularly and read the Quran as often as she can. You told me you wore burqa in Pakistan. When did you start wearing it? Utar. Ha. 13 14 saal ki ladki udhar pehen leti hai. Women in Pakistan start wearing burqas when they are 13 14 years old. And what did you do with your burqa when you came to England? Udari choda. She left her burqa at Karachi airport when she boarded the plane. And she felt very strange when she landed in London. She felt as if she was naked in, in her own words. But uh, she's had to leave it because not not many women wear the burqa in England. I think uh, parda which uh, confines the woman to the four walls of her house doesn't give her freedom of movement doesn't recognize her as a person i personally would not like that to happen uh, to anybody i i think this is my personal feeling again that woman is just equal to man she has got every right to have her personal freedom and uh, go out do a job if she wants to feel free but of course uh, i would not like her to become uh, as westernized as i find some of our you know some of the women here of course uh, i don't uh, i don't i don't mean to pass any reflection on your society far from me you have your own ways this 4 year old born in england is already becoming familiar with the english alphabet You have one whole bundle of six pounds, in addition to a decimal part of six pounds. Therefore, your answer. Co-education breaks the traditions of centuries for Pakistanis coming to Britain. The younger generation is learning a different way of life from their parents. So, in the case of number three, then uh, I want you to do it in this way. Uh, we need not lose our identity completely. but uh, i'm sure if we are going to make ourselves more acceptable to the society here and uh, have good relations with them we we'll have to readjust ourselves and try to know their point of view as well and uh, that could perhaps eliminate uh, any misunderstanding if there is any The Pakistani girl in this gym wears the same clothes as other girls in her school but changes into traditional dress at home. She lives in two worlds which will she and others of her generation choose when they grow up. Behind the bar. 